A-listers only. We actually got laughed off the Shark Tank. Put it through the hoops that would destroy the idea. Oh my god, I can't live without that. Most advice is useless. Up to ship our millionth unit. Credit cards don't lie. That's when it starts getting good. Don't polish the chrome on the space shuttle, right? Definitely keep things lean. Um, crowdfund if you can. Don't panic under any circumstances. Or and for God's sakes, have some fun. Team up with people who have a sense of adventure. When you're interviewing for new teammates, if any red flags come up with the interview process, don't ignore them. A-listers only. Yeah, if you're interviewing someone and you think, man, I think they could be really good, but I'm not so sure about this, then they're no out. way. They're out. They're out yeah. It has to be, hell yeah, that person's awesome. You need to be surrounded by people and teammates who have a complete sense of adventure. Or put it another way, have a screw loose. Have a screw loose. Yeah, because yeah. there has to be something wrong with you in order to uh, launch a startup like that. If you're looking for a rational way to make money, I would steer wrong away business. from wrong business. <laughs> right? yeah. There will come a time where you're totally overwhelmed and you just realize you've taken on way too much and just give yourself permission to throw things off the ship and focus on a few things that are important. When I started uh, Rocket Book, um, I really had to ask myself the question, is this going to help me build a business? Most advice is useless because what you're doing has never really been done before. So if regular advice would apply to you, you probably don't have an interesting startup. You have a new big idea. The only expert in the world is you. You can't doubt yourself. All you have is yourself, right? So you have to believe in yourself. If you have a new idea, you should be trying to put it through the hoops that would destroy the idea and show you that the idea is no good so you can move on to the next idea. Just don't get personally attached to any one idea. I think. And you eventually build up these calluses, which turn, turn into your greatest asset. Yeah. Right? Because when, when we said we were going to innovate the notebook, uh, people laughed at us, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. We actually got laughed off a of Shark Tank and uh, in out of a couple of venture capitalists, and um, you know we're about to ship our millionth unit. There seems to be like this false debate out there where people ask, is it the quality of the idea or is it the execution? And I think that the idea has to be good enough, has to be great enough, where the execution can be eh, so-so, but the idea is so awesome, the product's so awesome, yeah. that it will, at least in the early stages, help you deal with the fact that execution just isn't going to be perfect. And then polishing and making it nice afterward is something you do afterward. It's like the Reed Hoffman, you should be embarrassed about, uh, with your first re release, otherwise you move too slow. There you go. If your idea isn't awesome, then all of the great execution in the world just isn't going to matter. Would you say that your, your odds of success are proportional to how good of an idea that you have? Absolutely. I agree. If you're going to innovate, you should really try to invent, right? Because the bigger the, the idea, the crazier it is, the, most, the more mind-blowing it is, the, the more people's eyes light up and they shake their heads when they can tell them that, the easier it is to launch a company. But you really have to get that reaction of, oh my god, I can't live without that. And even take it a step further, ask them for their credit card yep. and see what happens then. That's right. A lot of the people who would say that's a great idea would be like, that's a great idea, I'm just not ready to, uh, they'll have a bunch of excuses why. And you'll know that there's something lacking in your idea, you've got to think deeper. Credit cards don't lie. No. <laughs> 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 when people go to launch a uh, company, but really a product, you know, it's tempting to lay things down and, and be methodical and, and crank it through things. But in reality, it's complete mayhem. You just have to barrel through a what did I, what did I say? Drive your car through yeah. <laughs> through a department store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Around here, we always say, "Don't polish the chrome on a space shuttle." Right? You can do this mm -hmm. because everyone runs around saying that what ninety percent of businesses fail. Maybe that's true, but I don't believe that ninety percent of smart relentless entrepreneurs fail, right? You just need to get through a bunch of failures until you get to success. To be successful, you only need one idea to work. You know, imagine there's there's other entrepreneurs around you and they are, you're getting to the point where they're giving up. Like that's when it starts getting good when you start pushing forward harder and harder. For example, when you're trying to invent a microwavable notebook mm. and we spent nine months in uh, in my home office with a microwave, different bunch micro of microwaves, lots of microwaves, but we kept setting them on fire. Yeah. Stacks of paper from around the world. We would just put them in and try different configurations of them. Those yeah. were hard, long Those days. dark days. Yeah. Yeah. But we just kept going. We kept microwaving stuff. We <laughs> <laughs> invented the rocket book wave. And we also discovered a new invention yeah. during the process, which ended up becoming our next product, which was the rocket book Everlast. So it was just serendipity of just trying so hard to make this microwavable product work. We actually tried basically every single piece of stack of paper ever manufactured around yeah. the world. I think we've stuck inside of microwaves. Um, and that's where we really started to experiment a lot more with synthetic paper and found some really cool discoveries that led to our next breakthrough. To be relentless in business, you have to be a bit obsessed with the outcome, right? So you know, we were obsessed with making a microwave notebook. You have to be obsessed with finishing it. 
and that way nothing will get in your way. I mean, we're still obsessed with ideas of inventing. Uh, we, we totally want to think about ways that other people would disrupt us and be the first ones to do that to ourselves. Like, let's try to disrupt ourselves. And it's always tricky when you've had some success because there's all these little things that you want to fix and you want to polish that from on the space shuttle. But really what you need to be doing is to be thinking of that next big idea. Um, and it's harder and harder to do as you become bigger and bigger. It's having kind of control over your ship in a vast turbulent sea. But at least you can control your ship and it's up to you. You know, you realize that you're making a difference uh, in the world but, or in people's lives. And for every one positive thing like that that happens, there's probably 10 or more, I can't believe that just yeah, happened, yeah. that you have to survive. So you have to be looking forward to that next you know, breakthrough that you can celebrate. When you're building something out of nothing and you're making all of these things happen and you're bringing a team together to make all of these things happen. Um, you just can't do that you know, in a typical type of job. And for God's sakes, have some fun.